Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. I'm going to spare you uh, regular viewers of the channel with the uh, visual of me stamping out these birch trees again and then painting them with the, uh, the bleed proof white white on the back side of them to create that uh, oh that look of the birch trees um, the opaque white birch trees on vellum okay now I've done one layer of them like this and uh, this is just using the one birch tree stamp okay but I've used it um, about four different times on there and sometimes a little bit skewed and this is another impression uh, layer on vellum this time using the snowy bank down here, but then uh, flanked with these birch trees right here. So the idea that we're going for here is multiple values of these. Now, sometimes I create the multiple values by stamping on the back side of this as well, and then, you know, painting them accordingly so we have them on the front and back. But to create even more space and depth, the theory is to do them on separate pieces of vellum that we will sandwich together like so. And you can kind of see you know, get a glimpse of kind of the idea that we're going after right here, kind of a real kind of atmospheric, I don't know, deep, misty look, I guess you can call it, okay? And hopefully that looks pretty good. But now what I'm going to do in the background here, I don't know if this is going to read at all because we're looking through two layers of vellum. So even, like, say, even if you put it, um, this on top of um, something that's, uh, black like this plate or something like this okay you know you can really barely see that and this is like black okay so I you know I don't know if I put anything back there if it's going to matter or not but why don't we just do it just in case um, sometimes when you spray mount these vellum pieces together they get a little bit more transparent so a little bit more shows through so let's just see how that goes okay so what I have here is just a gray pad. I don't think I'm, the gray is going to show up at all, but it'll provide a base layer. This is a half page piece of matte cardstock. Okay. Now you don't need to be careful on here at all. You know, I'll try to be apply it with, you know, a reasonable kind of degree of flair to it. But like I said, I don't know if it's going to show up one bit. Okay. May or may not. Okay, now I want this like super streaky. That's what I'm going for here, okay? So I'm going to, see, I'm kind of reaching through and kind of dragging this over here. And then what I'll do is I'll come down a little bit more so that I have the retention of this light layer in there. Okay, like, like I said, I don't know if this is going to show up. But instead of just a white piece of paper, why don't we try it anyway? It can't hurt. If it doesn't show up, then, you know, no harm done. It's not like, oh my god, I wasted, you know, you know, two minutes of my life trying, you know, to develop something. <laughs> I don't know. I guess if we were in a hurry and, you know, we're limited on time, then maybe, yeah, you know, we can do it. But here, I'm doing it for us here. If it doesn't show up, then don't do it. Okay. Or I don't know, you can, or you can start off with a kind of a darker piece of paper and streak in some white. I don't know. Maybe this is, will be, this will be something very subtle and it'll read on the subconscious level. I don't know. I'm just joking. Okay. Now, this is obviously, I'm going to have to develop this darker, but I'm just starting off with the gray. I'm going to do it in black, too. Um... Maybe I should do it in like a versifying black or something like that. It's like one of the darkest blacks out there in the ink world altogether. Maybe, huh? I don't know. All right, let's, so let's just take a little gander at this, okay? Maybe it shows up a touch. But that's, you know, that's through a single layer. Put another layer on top there. Yeah, okay, it shows up a little bit, you know, like that. Okay, so I think, I think if we put on some black on the outside, I think, you know, we'll get a, you know, a decent little, you know, vignette going. Um, huh, that did show up. I was kind of surprised. I didn't know if it would show up. Okay, so I'm going to go with some black dye based thing. Let's not go so dark, okay? As, well, you know, I thought we could. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring, I'll do the four corners, okay, of this piece of paper. For the most part. You know, I am coming in a little bit more, okay. But this vignette will kind of, um, it kind of creates a frame, you know, around something. I always mention, um, like, portrait photography. Uh, you know, anytime it gets there, there, uh, photo taken at school or something like that. There's usually kind of a darker perimeter around it. These days they're taking like digital photos and you know you can put any kind of background that you want you know around the uh, subject matter. Um, but it frames things off, it contains things, and it just kind of creates a, a nice composition like that, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? You don't have to worry about it because this is going to be very, barely visible anyway. So that's a good thing, right? I'm just using a paper towel. See, and what I'm doing is I'm staying in one area for a lot, you know, quite a bit of time and dragging it in from the outside edge in like that. If you want to build it up, then you kind of tap around like that. Huh. What side's up and what side's down? This has a bit of a stroke going kind of up. So is it like a U like that? Let's take a look here. Oops, this one goes underneath here. Like that. I guess it doesn't almost it almost doesn't matter. Okay, I think that looks okay like that, All right? Hmm. Okay, so, spray sealing time. Not my favorite thing in the world to do because it's sticky, gooey, yuckiness, but it makes this process go a lot faster. So, I'm going to take this outside. I'm going to put, apply some spray mount to it, okay? And then we'll come in and we'll sandwich our first layer right over the top of it. Okay, this is what the spray sealant looks like on here. It's a pretty goopy textured surface. I don't know, maybe I sprayed too much on here sometimes. Um, I haven't used uh, a lot of the spray sealants in a while. It's, it's a real goopy fun, though. And it is certainly beneficial for this process right here because the whole scene gets attached and not just in a certain area. Now, I do run into kind of this pebble, pebbly texture on here a lot of times. I think it's because I just, I probably spray too much on there. I should probably be spraying less. Okay. I'm just kind of living with it as kind of part of the process, though, or look. But you get that kind of that textured area in there. All right. I'm not someone that kind of is opposed to texture, though. I do like textures. I just wish it was kind of a more controlled one. But so be it, you know. Okay, now this um, spray uh, mounting on top of um, cardstock is going to give our vellum some structure, you know, which makes it kind of easier to handle. Um, you know, rather than vellum, you know, if anyone's working with vellum, you know, it's all, you know, kind of ripply and you, know, you heat set it, it kind of warps a little bit and whatnot. So, and then, you know, you want to format into a card, you know, it's kind of harder to do. It's a lot easier to do with cardstock, right? Okay. So that is pretty smooth. Okay. I still have some bubbles here. Let's kind of get those worked out. I kind of burnish them out with my fingernail. You can take anything. Take a you know, a rubber stamp if you want to and kind of burnish it out a little bit. It's bad when you get a little bubble on the interior there. Those ones are kind of a little bit more difficult to get out. Okay. But I don't know. That vellum's tough though. Sometimes you get this ripple and it just for the life of you will not come out. It's really hard to get it out of there. It's almost like it has a life of its own. So Get, do what you can. You know, if you do have a bubble, try not to sweat it. You know, just like, call it, that's your three-dimensional aspect of your scene, you know. 
<laughs> you want it to look uh, three-dimensional or something like that. Okay, so that is one layer right there. Now what we're going to do... Now, I could do some things on here. I could kind of tint some of this. I can add a little bit of tone on it. You know, some shading. Maybe I'll do that right now. Why not? Okay, this might make it easier too. Okay, so I'm just going to take a black pencil, colored pencil, and this is going to be my lighting in, in this scene, okay? So what I'm going to do is it's center lighting. So the trees to the right of the um, light are going to get a little bit darker, or darker, doesn't have to be a little bit, could be a lot, but I'll darken them in, I'll shade them. Okay, now don't put a huge amount of this on here, kind of do it gradually so you can kind of see if you want to add more this, like that, okay. See, it's kind of, you're adding that shadow on one side, Jerry, you're creating light on the other side. Kind of, uh, perception is by contrast, right? So if you darken one side of it, like that, the other side, that's light already, becomes lighter. By contrast, it stands out more. Okay, see that? This tree over here. Oh, here's um, some ripples in this one right here. I can see it. Boy, those do not want to get out of there. All right, that is our texture. <laughs> so let's darken that side a little bit. Let's put a little bit more shadow areas on some of these. You know, you don't have to do, it doesn't have to be even, okay? I'm going to do it like down here, up here, wherever. Okay. It's going to make it a little bit more irregular in some areas. You can have kind of a common area of darkness like that, but then kind of, you know, vary it, and it makes your objects seem a little bit more um, dimensional. By contrast, okay, now see how I kind of just flip this around like this because, I, you know, it's easier for me to get my hand over here so you don't always have to work with things um, right side up. Turn it in the direction that's the most conducive for the most comfortable mark, okay? And see if I was doing it this way, you know, well, I don't know. I guess you can see that too, but... Um, Doing it this way, I have to put my hand on the scene. You know, you can put a piece of paper over or something like that, too, but it's just as easy for me to just flip this over. And see, I'm not touching any of the, you know, my paper. See how fast this is? You just kind of come up there like that. Vary it, you know, put a little bit more darkness in some areas. Maybe at the base of the trunks, you can go a little bit darker. Okay, light is coming from in here. You know, you can kind of create some shadows, kind of going out a little bit. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time with this at all because we have another layer that's going in here, and it's going to be covering up all that area down there. So, yeah, we don't need to do any of that. But see that now? Um, we've created those shadows in there and that lighting direction. And when I adhere this one to the top of these, then we'll shade these ones as well, okay? And it's just easier to do it, you know, once it's mounted, because it's nice and flat like that, okay? Okay, so I'll spray seal this, and we'll come back in, and I'll put our top layer in there. How many layers we can go, I don't know. Okay, um, layer number three being applied. So the base layer, intermediate layer, top layer. All right, now I'm not doing a very good job spray sealing. It's super cold out, and I think that's affecting the, uh, the spray kind of uh, um, pattern <laughs> coming out of that can. It's like um, real kind of clumpy or something. I'm not getting a fine spray, but I think it's working okay. And that spray, I think, has a little bit of a coloration, too. It's like a warm tinge, so it's kind of looking like a 
antique look in there, which isn't bad, but um, I don't know. It's just kind of unexpected, you might call it. Okay, let me get a clean piece of... Man, I'm going through a lot of paper here these days. Okay, so... Okay. All right. I think that looks you know, pretty decent in terms of the depth aspect of it. Okay. But let's. Um, okay. I've, I'm thinking about whether or not I should trim this down right now. Uh oh, I should test if this is perfectly flat. It is pretty flat. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to trim this, the corners off of this, because I have some of the, you know, not all the m layers merged perfectly. You know, they're all half page, eight, uh, eight and a half by five and a half. But, you know, I didn't put it, I didn't place them perfectly, so they're a little bit off center. So, like down here, there's like a half an inch that I need to cut off. Otherwise, there's, there's this exposed type of kind of adhesive right down there. Um, let's see, maybe I should measure this one because it looks like there's quite a bit of a difference down there. It's like off by a sixteenth of an inch, so um, let's see, sixteenth of an inch from five and a half, so I'll mark it right here, and I'll cut this one from here over to that mark right there. Now, when you're doing something like this, make several, just go with light passes. And you won't cut yourself and you'll stay kind of on the, uh, oops, I'm, going, I'm just gonna say you're staying on the path. I'm going off of it a little bit right here. Okay, here we go. We're going through quite a few layers here, so. Okay, here we go. There, finally. Well, I was I was trying to cut right on one of the lines here, so I didn't do a very good. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. I was gonna say I didn't do a really good job, but that's a pretty straight line right now, though. So it cleans up your edges when you uh, trim it off like that too. Now everything's like perfectly merged. All right, let me let me do a little bit more of this, and I'll come in a little bit more. Okay, so two layers of vellum and one layer of hundred pound cardstock. So quite a bit, but you know, just takes a few passes, and you're through them. Okay, now on the this side right here, I did have like this ripple bubble. So maybe I'll do this and I'll cut into that bubble a little bit and just kind of eradicate it a little bit. I don't know if it's eradicating it, but there's just less of it. But see these edges right here? They're really nice and crisp and everything is merged up. I didn't do the top yet. The top part is the parts where is the part kind of where it's matching it up. So that is pretty match you know matched up pretty well. I don't know if I really need to trim it, but why not? You might use your paper trim. I don't know. Don't know if you can kind of get that thin of a line, you know, or that thin of a trim. Um, but you might be able to. Okay, so all right, let's take a look. I have to make my assessment because I can see what this these things look like. Um, you know, when I just do them once, but once you get them sandwiched in like that, you don't know how much of that's really going to show through. But like that adhesive really does add some temperature to it. It's really kind of a warm tinge to it, that glue. Okay, but let's go in here and let's reiterate that same lighting um, scheme that's going on with the center light and the shadows being on the 
know, the appropriate sides of the trees based on their location within the piece, within the composition. So on all the trees to the right, we'll give them kind of right side shadow, meaning left side lighting. All right, it's subtle, but you know, I think it's pretty readable. Um, oh, one of the things I should have done on those other trees in the in the background was to uh, I should have illuminated them a little bit more with my white pen back there. I, I didn't do that. I forgot my white paint pen. Oh well, next time. Okay, so. Up my trunks here. White trunks. Doesn't mean they have to be stark white. Pretty white, you know, because we want them to be that. But um, they can also have, you know, white can have shadow just like this piece of paper, you know, go like that. There's shadow down there, right? Okay, so right in here, we have this snowy bank right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some shadows on it based on this lighting in the background. So what you do is you just kind of take your pencil or you know whatever you're using and kind of create a little bit of deeper shadow area right here. And then as you move away from it, just kind of dissipate it a little bit. Meaning you just kind of use a lighter touch like this to create kind of a lighter, um, Shadow area, okay? Now these are background trees, so I'm not going to create too much of a shadow on them. I, you know, I could reiterate the shadows a little bit more on the front of the vellum, but so I didn't develop the shadow back here, so you can just do it on the, you know, the front of it. It's no problem. Okay, so a little bit darker here. And then I'm going to flare it out a little bit, so I'm going to have the shadow kind of going this way, okay? Okay, by doing these shadows too, what we're doing is we're setting the pieces into the scene more, okay? You're kind of integrating them in with the, uh, you know, their surroundings. You're giving them visual weight and opacity. You're saying that light isn't just shining right through them. They're affecting their, you know, the terrain. All right, so that is that. I mean, we can go, you know, we can go deeper shadows. So if you go deeper shadows, you know, and more distinct, what you're saying there's, there's, there's a brighter light kind of shining on them in the background. Okay, now, let's see. Let's create a little bit of a shadow for this guy right here. Like that. So you're just kind of flaring it out, okay? I'm not measuring it or anything like that. I'm not that, you know, kind of a... particular about all that. All right. Okay, so for me, there's, um, there's other things that, you know, we're going to do on this piece that I think should kind of bring it together a little bit more, uh, potentially. Okay, so one of them is a little bit of mist or something like that. And I think I'm going to do snowfall over the top of it. But, okay, let's add in a little bit of mist now. Oh, before I do that, though, um, it's good to add in, if you're going to use it, um, some white paint. I'm just using my uh, little 0.7 millimeter Artistra one. I don't know if it's the same. It might be the same as the... Uh, 
the Meowzin one. I've been using the Meowzin, but um, let me try the Artistro run out of the uh, out of the Artistro set. It could be the same exact pen. I'm not sure. Okay, so we we shadowed, uh, put a shadow on the l right side of the trees to the right. Now I'm not going to put this highlight on those background trees. I don't think because they're just they're not white anymore. Um, you know, showing, you know, looking through the, um, the vellum and adhesive, too. So I'm going to add this white on the left side of the tree. So you add the shadow, the black, on the right side, and you add the white on the left side, you know, because it's the side that's facing the light, right? So that would be the side that, you know, stands to reason it's the lightest, okay? I'm kind of going up the tree like this, but also, you know, I'm kind of doing a little bit of scribble. You can kind of go with the grain of the uh, the tree, too, like, you know, like this around the trunk in some areas, okay? And you see, I'm kind of doing it a little bit irregular, too. And that just, it adds to the overall look. If you, if you just do kind of do it in one spot, it's going to look out of place. You have, you have to do it kind of uh, create some continuity between um, one tree and the next, okay? Or the ones around it, at least. It doesn't mean you have to do the same thing on every tree. No, not at all. But you want to have it as a common um, texture or color or something like that. So see, now it's on all three of these trees right here. So it doesn't stand out, you know. But see, I have this solid, thick line on these trees over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm not trying to get rid of it completely, but I just want to kind of minimize it. So these trees over here are getting illuminated on the opposite side of the trees on the opposite side of the page, okay? I flip this upside down. scribble in a little bit more highlight in you know, if you want to. Things look a little bit more three-dimensional. Shadow and highlighting, okay? Okay, all right. So that is that. Okay, now let's go in with a cotton ball and some white pigment ink. I'm pretty sure you can pro you know, you can probably use whatever pigment ink you have because we're just putting a very thin layer on here, okay? It's not like we're going to be doing, you know, like impressions with, you know, a regular pigment ink, a, a oil-based one, like a Hero Arts Unicorn, you know, which I love, okay? The Brilliant Sinks do dry on kind of non-porous surfaces very easily, though. So, okay. I don't think I have to be too gingerly with this because this scene is pretty light in value. You know, it's mostly white. I didn't go dark, you know, so I can go in with a pretty, you know, heavy application of this, and it's not going to matter too much. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this kind of low-line fog down at the base here, and that it kind of reiterates what's going on with the vellum. The vellum kind of diffuses things through this translucent layer, right? Well, this white pigment ink is also, you know, creating this translucent layer 
of ink, you know, down here. So you have this translucency between the first layer of venom, vellum, and the second layer. And now we're also kind of doing the same type of thing with another medium right over the top of it, okay? I'm not putting this over everything. I'm just, you know, I kind of see this fog as being kind of this low line type of uh, um, atmospheric, I don't know, whatever moisture kind of hovering around the uh, the base of the uh, the trees. Okay. I might put a little bit more of white in the center here. I don't know if it'll read too much. It might. But if this is kind of where the lighting is coming from, you, you can kind of hit it in there a little bit more. And we, we see so we can kind of obscure even the tree back here that's already obscured by being underneath another layer of vellum. So this, this white pigment ink is a really, it can really be um, effective in terms of this technique of adding that atmosphere and kind of mood and essence to your pieces. It's kind of moving beyond the visuals. What you're, what we're doing by creating something like this, I think it creates um, emotion. And what is emotion? It's, it's a feeling, right? So you're kind of moving from visuals to um, something that might be more kinesthetic, you know, touch and feeling. You know, it might trigger something inside, and I think that's where kind of lighting comes into play, you know. Um, people love sunsets and sunrises because of that colored light when we're made aware of, you know, the elements that are around us, the dust, the molecules of moisture in the air, you know. You know, when they turn color, we can see them. We're more kind of a in tune with um, kind of our environment. You know, it's not just empty space, you know, right next to you. And that's, you know, it's like emotional content in your visual pieces like that. <laughs> it just comes, you know, it can be really enhanced just with like a cotton ball and some white pigment ink, you know. It's a, just an easy way to do it. Okay, so let's see that. Kind of that atmosphere in there. But see these trunks down here, how they're obscured like that? Same thing with this one in the background. It, it pushes that tree a little bit back, doesn't it? Okay. Putting it down here on those um, background vellum trees, it, the vellum tree, it almost looks like, it looks like the uh, the vellum is raised, but it's because it's on the top layer of vellum, you know, than the one in the distance, so it's, it's kind of interesting. It's real, it's like super dimensional. Okay, I'm just kind of tapping this around here and there just to, you know, bring, I'm finding that I can do this. I normally wouldn't do this on a lot of pieces because it's not so light like this. But I'm finding just kind of putting a little bit more of this oscillation between, you know, kind of crisp and um, soft is kind of contributing to the overall look. All right. Easy to go overboard, but I don't think, you, on this one right here, I don't think you could do too much. Me, I don't know if I obscured the whole thing. I don't, you know, I don't think that's in our best interest, but I don't know. I think that looks okay like that. Okay, now one of the other things that I was thinking about doing was, I was thinking about doing a splatter painting technique right over the top of this, and 
I think that will be a good look for this piece. Here's my splatter painting tool of uh, choice. Just an old toothbrush. This one happens to be some Oral-B, probably given away free at a dentist office or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to open that up. Load it up. I'm going to go for, I'm loading it up a little bit more than what I normally do because this piece is so light in value. I think it could stand more of this texture that we're going to apply here. I just got some on the front of it. But. Okay, but I'm, you know, kind of draining some of it out of here. Okay, I dipped it in. I didn't dip it in the whole way. I kind of dipped it in that first half of it. Okay, and then you just get rid of some of it like that. Okay, let's take a look here. Let's see if we can see some of the splattering in here. It's a lot more obvious when I'm doing something that's a lot darker. You know, there's hardly any contrast here. Yeah, I'm taking this much more extreme. That's the most splatter painting I've ever done on a piece. Uh, at least on a half-page card. Um, again, because it's just not very visible. So, you know, it can take more. The contrast isn't there. So this is what it looks like um, texturized up front. You see that, you know, how much there is on there. There's quite a bit. I just kind of went through that because you can't even, you can barely see, well, yeah, you can barely see it in there. It's, an, it's a good texture though, don't you think? You know, having that in there like that. It's very subtle. I don't know if you can see it at all from, you know, kind of distance like that. Okay, so. You can see where I've applied that white pigment ink too. See how it's kind of glistening in there? Look at, that. Look at all that down there. And that's what it looks like. We can even do those light rays coming out of here. I'm not going to do it on this one, but that would be kind of interesting. All right, so um, let's take a look and see what um, kind of mounting options we have. Yeah, I don't know. Startering blue will do it. It's going to be hard to find um, something that this can go with. Oh, I think I know. Okay, so if we mount it on white... Okay, this is the same paper that I used on the background of the piece, okay? You know, with those grayscale tones. If I just put a little bit of this like this as a, as a little perimeter, like that, and then I think on the gold like this, like that, that'll look pretty good because this in here and I don't know if you can tell but it, it has a kind of a little bit of a warmer tinge to it okay see that this is white you see that yeah you can see that little tinge of <laughs> that's the spray adhesive color in there okay so okay let's see if this will no I didn't cut off enough off the edges here so I'm going to have to I'm just going to use some crafter's tape. I don't feel like going outside again and spray sealing this. Oh, okay, so this is really wet still. <laughs> it's wet with the, uh, the white pigment ink. So I use so much. I use so much. Uh... Oh, that pigment ink at the base here. It um, it was still a little bit tacky. That's pretty. Yeah, it's still a little bit tacky right in here. I used a ton of it right in here.
Okay. Crafter's tape. I'm trying to get as close to the edge as I can, but I'm not too concerned with it. Okay. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I only want to have to cut it off, trim it on um, two sides, so I'll try to get two of the sides already kind of set. I should take this out of here so I can see a little bit better. And it's laid down. I can kind of roughly position it a little bit more. Okay, so let's brayer this down. It's probably a good idea we heat set. I don't know if it was completely dry though, but Side's a little thicker. Eh. So be it. These are handmade cards. They are irregular. <laughs> At least mine are. Yeah, I didn't leave enough room up there. It's really, really thin. I'm not wearing my glasses. Probably should. All right, there's that. And let's do the bottom portion. There's a little center section in there. We can always put like a quote. I've been using the same deer on everything. And I, I don't want to use it on, th you know, another. Um, vellum piece, but it's my first piece in vellum in winter, though. Okay. So we have that. Then we have our gold. Um, Star Dream Antique Gold is the uh, the color of this one. We can also stamp on the antique gold. I haven't done any star dream pieces. I think I'm out of this tape right here. All right. Oh. Looking on my shelf for my box of uh, tape. These are pretty inexpensive. I haven't been using uh, this type of thing um, in the past, but I've come to appreciate it more. I mean, I've used them, but I don't know. I've, I've used more of the uh, the photo squares usually, but I don't know. This is something that's to be said for expediency. Okay, um, I don't know. I, I just kind of decide how much um, of a border I want. Kind of as I'm doing this, you know, you can go larger. That's way too much. I think something maybe about like that looks pretty good. And again, I'm not, I'm not measuring it. I'm just kind of looking at it up there, and you know, on the base, at the side. At this point in time, this piece is getting pretty thick here, because remember we had two layers of vellum in that one cardstock already. Now we have another layer of cardstock, and then, finally, the Star Dream here. Okay, let's see here. Dare I not measure? Keep it consistent. We'll keep it consistently off everywhere. <laughs> so I won't measure it again. Let's just cut it around. Let's just trim it right here. 
Ah! I made a bad cut right there. I went off my cut a little bit right there. It is truly a handmade card. The flurry of dislikes on this video ensue. But it is 3.11 a.m. right now. And I'm probably tired a little bit, but I don't know when you get creating like this, you know. You just got to keep going sometime. Okay, let's take a look here. I think that looks pretty good in the, you know, the gold. And it's a little bit flashy, but I think it, you know, goes with this piece pretty well. All right, so there's your birch trees. I don't know, you know, it, it's more exciting with the color and everything like that, but I just wanted to see the depth in this piece and how it would read, um, you know, with the additional layer, one extra layer of the vellum. I think it's pretty effective, especially like right in here, you know, in terms of the depth. I don't know, it's a different look. I think it, I think it could it could benefit from some you know some color in here a little bit. I don't know. I could put some uh, blue or something like that. Maybe something that will go with the the gold the touch, you know, on the um, the trunks here. Could benefit. You know, it would look good with that gold. You know it goes pretty well with that if I have a colored pencil in that color. I don't see my colored pencil of that tone, but like a slight violet, you know, like purple and gold, you know, goes pretty well together. So maybe I'll, but see, I need a, I need a, like a lighter version of this. I can use, you know, I can go with a very light touch of this, but kind of a pale violet would be a perfect one. I'm not seeing, I'm sure that color came in my Prisma colors, but I don't know, maybe I used it up when I was a kid. Um, a little kid, like purple was by far, hands, oh, hands down, my favorite color. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it still was when I was using a lot of, uh, um, I never used a lot of colored pencil. I've had this set for like years, okay. But um, yeah, it's kind of interesting to see the, the purple one kind of, you know, uh, as stubby as anything. Oops, I'm kind of digging into that white um, brilliance ink a little bit there. So let me stay away from that. Yeah, I think this little tinge of purple on here looks pretty good. What I'm doing is I'm hitting it in areas where I didn't apply you know, a lot of that white pigment ink. Okay, now, so that being said, kind of going over it with this colored pencil here, it kind of dug up some of that um, white pigment ink. You can reapply the white pigment ink and just let it dry, but you can also spray seal this afterwards, okay? And that will kind of finish it off really nicely, too. Things could potentially get become a little bit darker, too, by spray sealing it. Any of the media that's on the front of it, of course, it's not going to make, you know, the background things darker because it's not coming in contact with it. But uh, let me show you this right here. And let me put this down here in the shadows too, maybe. This. Okay, so here's a little bit of that tinge of that color. I don't know if you can see it or not, but here is is like that. Okay, is that a little tinge of it right down there? So it kind of goes with this whole thing. It's very subtle, though, but, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's subtle, so I keep adding more, right? Okay, now where I scraped away that one little area down there, I mean, you can add more if you want to. You can add multiple layers. Some The, really, the pigment inks tend to dry um, darker than what they look like when they're freshly applied. So sometimes if you want it, you know, a certain degree of lightness right in here, what you have to do is you have to reapply it and build it up more once it dries, okay? It just has a different characteristic. 
lot of dye-based inks look lighter when they dry. Well, pigment inks over the top of darker things become more transparent as they dry. So they don't physically get darker, it's just that they become much more transparent, showing whatever's underneath them, you know, more. All right, so anyway, another little, you know, multi-layer experiment. I think, you know, going with some bolder tones, you know, this is kind of more of an exercise in subtleties or something of that sort. Okay, but anyways, winter scene for the winter. Splatter painting was fun uh, in here, you know, doing my fall types of the ones with the fall foliage. I mean, you could splatter paint it, but, you know, I'm not sure, uh, you know. Not that we have to go for accuracy or something like that, but I don't know if you'd see some fall, you know, that of snowfall, maybe an early snowfall in the, in the fall or something like that. Look at this right here. This has all this, this beams of light coming across there. I don't know why it looks like that, but it kind of does a little bit to me. Okay, so anyways, birch trees in the snow. Peace. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.